Hey everyone, this is Allison with Saratech. Today we're going to look at manually creating a wire harness and then creating a form board for it. You can see I already have my harness assembly open, but I want to create a new harness. I'm going to go up to the Assemblies tab, Create New, and create a new part to hold my new harness. I'm going to go ahead and create an empty part because I don't have any components placed in it yet. Whenever possible, you want to make sure you're modeling in the context of your assembly. That way you can make sure you don't have any interferences with existing parts, and you have enough wire length to get around anything that's in the way. So you can see that even though I've made my new empty assembly my work part, all of the ports are still available to me. If you don't see that, go up to the Assemblies tab, go over to Wave Geometry Linker, select Routing Object in the drop-down, and then select all your ports. And that'll let you access your ports from inside your harness parts so that you can make sure you're always modeling in context and that if there's a change downstream, then your parts can be updated easily. So the first thing I'm gonna do is place a part. This is a lot like the, the add functionality in the assemblies application, but it's a little bit different. I'm going to search for my part here. And now I can just select this port here. And you can see it placed my part directly on the port. I didn't have to create any assembly constraints or move my part around or anything. I'm going to do the same thing for my other component. Place it on this port. And I can see there might be some interference there, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate this 45 degrees. So now that we have our two components in there, I'm going to create a path between them. I'm going to use the spline path tool. Select the first port, select the second port, and now we have our spline. I'm also going to add a bit of an extension to each side. That'll make sure we don't have any sharp bends coming out of our connectors. Go ahead and click OK. And now I'll get on to the electrical component part. If you have ECAD data, you can go to Import and import that data. For our purposes, I'm going to go ahead and create components manually. I could type in a component name and part name here, but instead I'm just going to go ahead and select them in the graphics window Type in a device ID and a connector ID, and I'm done. Now I'll click Next to create another one for the other connector. And I'll click Finish. So now that we have that out of the way, let's connect our connectors. In the Electrical Connection Navigator, Right-click Work Part, choose Connection, Create. I want this to be a cable connection, so I'll select Cable there. Your From component is your first component. What I'm going to do is select a device and a connection, and it'll fill these in automatically. Do the same thing for the To component. To select our other device and connection, Click Next. I don't have any intermediate components in this case, so I'll skip this step. For my stock, I'm going to go in and pick out a standard part. Click OK. And outer eye diameter of 5.5 is a little large for our purposes, so I'm going to take that down to 3. Click Next. Click Finish. And at this point, NX tries to automatically route the parts. If we imported ECAD data, then usually that'll work out. Since we're creating it manually, NX has a little bit of trouble. Luckily for us, it's not too hard to route manually either. You can right-click, go to Manual Route, Component Level, and there's our harness. Now I'm going to create a form board for this. I'm going to start by making this my displayed part. And you can see, 
This is how the part looks while it's in the context of the assembly. I'll go up to the formboard group, click create formboard drawing, create a new part to hold my drawing, and now I have this sort of 2.5D view of my harness. It's all straightened out. I can still rotate in 3D, but everything lies in the same plane. I can choose my options here to, to choose how the harness is originally laid out. This is a relatively simple harness, so changing these options isn't going to make a lot of difference for me. So I'm just going to accept the defaults. For some more options of how to lay out your harness, you have these tools here. I'm going to use Rotate Component to rotate this component. I want to rotate it 90 degrees so it's a little more obvious how it looks. If I have a pretty big complex harness and I'm not sure it's going to fit on my drawing sheet, I can go up to Shape Segment. For this case, I'll choose Radial Bend. I'll choose the main segment. And this radius is pretty large for such a small harness, so I'm going to take it down to 5. I'll select a pivot point in the middle and another point above it. And that's that. To create the actual formboard drawing, all I need to do is swap to the drafting application. I don't need to populate the title block. And here you see you can place views just like you would for any other NX drawing. I'll go ahead and click Finish. If you notice that you have the ports and coordinate systems like I do, go ahead and check your reference sets. I just want the model reference set. Now I have some wire harness routing specific tools. I'll go up to the Industry tab. If you don't see the Industry tab, just right click on the ribbon bar and make sure the Industry tab is checked. First I'm going to go to Path Length Annotation. Select my path and place the annotation. I'll go ahead and close that. Another useful tool is the Cut Sheet Annotation. That's going to take things from your connectors, connectors and connections and put them into a table. It's a pretty small table for this harness, but for something more complex, this is going to be a very useful tool. That's all for now. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, you can consult the NX documentation or contact our support team.